interesting joint work between myself, Dr. John Crawl, uh, Daniel Rubenstein, Jason Holmberg, Tanya Berger-Wolf, and Charles Stewart as a joint project between Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, Princeton University, and the University of Illinois Chicago. So what do we mean by detection from an animal standpoint? It's basically how can we identify this individual over time? So from a mathematical standpoint, we draw SIFT key points over the animal. We put this into a large search database and we can query on these key points to go and find the animal and see if we've seen it in the past. And this mathematical representation is very well understood and it actually ends up getting quite uh, good matches if you build a large enough database and you have a good enough search structure. But to get to this point of having nice clear pictures of animals, you have to pre-process given something like this. So given this is your input, you have to find a way to run a detection algorithm or a series of algorithms that can find all the animals that are unique, figure out their species because you can't identify across species, um, and you certainly can't identify by looking at different viewpoints. So if you see an animal on the right side consistently over time, you can't match it against its left side. They're not left-right symmetric. So you have to have these basic, you know, annotation metadata to be able to solve the identification problem. So what we propose today is a detection pipeline that actually gets you to that point. So given an input image, the first thing we will do is perform an image classification, just to figure out what species exist in the image. We then do annotation localization, putting bounding boxes over all the animals. We then try to figure out the species and viewpoint. We perform a species-specific background segmentation to try to get rid of as much background vegetation or trees as possible. And then we actually perform a novel concept called AOI, which stands for annotation of interest, which tries to focus on what is the primary target of this image, right? We're taking a picture of a zebra. We want to identify it. We don't care about the 15 other background zebras that you can't really identify anyway to prioritize our focus. So image classification, again, is trained to predict a multi-label, multi-class vector, and it's generally considered as a high-pass filter to prevent irrelevant images from being processed, things that don't contain animals I care about, pictures of birthday parties, things like that. Um, next thing is we go for annotation localization. Um, we actually find that in this domain, if you have the right data set, you can actually get fairly decent results in terms of high precision, high recall um, on standalone images for, of animals, but when they start to herd and overlap and occlude each other, you get problems. Um, our detector is based on a variant of Yolo V1 uh, by Redmond. And then from there, we can take these bounding boxes and actually try to classify them. This is this classic ImageNet style, you know, give me a class for the uh, individual that I saw, be it a plain zebra or a grevy zebra or it's a type of uh, giraffe, and actually go get the viewpoint. Um, we then perform a background segmentation. So it's trained to predict a coarse background segmentation mask. Um, and it's tasked with basically providing a foreground weight for all the key points that we actually end up using by the SIF matching algorithm. Um, this is trained with patches. So we have no segmentation data at all, um, which is a benefit and a curse. We can actually train this patch-wise and get fairly decent and even compelling results from a species by species specific standpoint. Um, from there, we actually move on to AOI classification as the fifth pipeline component. This is trained to predict an identifiability flag or an identifiable flag um, for each of the annotations that we see. And this is tasked with eliminating as many incidental sightings of animals as that we can. Um, this is generally meant to be a prioritizer. Um, generally, you would want to go over and review all the annotations that you saw, all the animals you saw to get the best identified uh, population estimate. But when you're starting to triage processing, you have to start somewhere. Um, so we go for the most prominent animals in the image first. This is trained with a input image and a, and a mask for the annotations. And you actually predict a yes or no as to whether or not it's prominent enough. Um, we also produce a new data set that actually includes um, six species of interest that we care about, two species of zebra, two species of giraffe, uh, whale flukes, and sea turtles. And these are photographs taken by actual biologists, wildlife rangers, citizen scientists, uh, and conservationists in, on the ground in Kenya or uh, out the coast for um, the aquatic animals. And we distribute this data set freely in the Pascal VOC data set for anybody to actually try. So these are harder examples. Um, of in situ animals, and it actually shows examples and scenarios that are past what you would normally see in, in ImageNet or Coco. Um, so in summary, the idea is to reduce errors and the need for human in the loop uh, reviewing for identifiable identification. 
we want to focus processing on the most identifiable animals, not any background animals that are just incidental. And we want to introduce a new data set for detection and identification in this, confirmation, this conservation domain. Uh, for further results, uh, please come see me in poster. Thank you.